Corwin, are you good on levels? see the whole the covered part yeah you can definitely see at least that wide okay that's good yeah i'm trying yeah. to get as many of them in as possible i can have them skewed together for i think too i can go pretty wide but i, I guess not too wide but i can uh, my personal presence is probably within the pillars oh yeah i think that's perfect yeah. that's okay i might have yeah because that's so fine we have the shares on this so i think that's good that's yeah. great thank you Actually, they can just spread out all yeah, the way from yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're not really running the show; we just shoot it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you're gonna ask us our opinion, yeah, then we're gonna tell you what we prefer. Creative right control, like yeah. I love that. You know what? Yeah. <laughs> Change it to union rectangle. This isn't really a square.
Okay. Hello, everyone. I'm San Francisco Mayor London Breed, and I am so excited to be here today to announce the budget for the city and county of San Francisco. I see all the department heads clapping. They're really excited about these new budget numbers. Um, when I think about the challenges that have existed in this city, I can't help but think about all the things that we have tried to do over the past couple of years, especially during this pandemic. And when people have made a number of requests for additional services, for additional support, for additional assistance, it's not just about the dollars and the policy. It's about the people who actually do the work. The people who work for both the city and county of San Francisco and the people who work for various nonprofit agencies in San Francisco. So as we unveil this $13.95 billion budget for the city and county of San Francisco, it's important to take a deep dive into what we need to do as we come out of a global pandemic. We need to focus on the people. We need to focus on our workforce. We need to focus on our economic recovery. We need to focus on the challenges that exist with public safety. We need to focus on helping our most vulnerable and our homeless populations and improve our transportation network. So many things to do, but I gotta tell you, on this beautiful sunny day in Union Square, I am hopeful. I am optimistic about the future of our city more than I have ever been because I am confident about the investments that we are making. So let's start off with our economic recovery. Many of us remember last November where we saw mass looting that happened right here in Union Square. And all of a sudden, people put us on a map virally like they never have before. But what they didn't show was our response to what happened here in Union Square. Not only more of a police presence, but also more of our incredible community ambassadors who showed up time and time again, the beautiful ice skating ring, the, the tree lighting, and all the other activities, so much so that many of the retail businesses said that it was one of the best years they've ever had. Now think about that. San Francisco and our downtown and our economy, not just our retail spaces, but our workers, this downtown economy of tourists, this downtown economy of conventions and visitors and all the things that occur, generate anywhere close to 30 million people who visit it a year, which creates about $10 billion for our economy. $10 billion that not only came to the city as it relates to taxes, but supported many of the people who work down here. Many of the people who work and clean our hotel rooms and many of the folks who work at our retail establishments and many of our programs and supportive services. So it's important that we focus on our economic recovery because it doesn't f fall short. It doesn't fall on me that many of our storefronts are empty, that we need to do something about our economic recovery. We need to invest in our businesses. And so we're going to be making a significant investment of $50 million for various small businesses to help with grants, to help with loans, to help with our economic recovery. Money that is going to help support this community. We're going to be investing almost 20 million additional dollars to help clean our streets, to help improve the conditions of the streets, to make sure that the garbages are emptied, that the streets are power washed, that we keep San Francisco clean and green. We're gonna make sure that the investment goes towards our community ambassadors who are friendly faces, that when people come and visit our beautiful city, they have a lot of folks who are native San Franciscans who know the right restaurants to go to and the places to visit and the best place to jump on the cable car without waiting in the long lines. We're gonna invest in our economic recovery by making sure conventions are coming back and providing subsidies and other incentives 
to make sure San Francisco is their first choice. When I traveled to promote San Francisco, people talked about this city and how much they love it and how much they want to come here. But what they also talked about is their concerns about safety. And there was recently a survey done about public safety in San Francisco. And you want to know what over a thousand San Franciscans said in this survey about what they want to see? Over 80% wanted to see more police officers walking the beats. We made that happen in Union Square and we didn't see those mass looting situations occur since then. We have consistently tried to make it happen even though the, the Tenderloin is geographically a larger footprint, we have, to, we have tried to make it happen in the Tenderloin community and will continue to do so. But let's be honest, it's been tough. It's been tough for law enforcement and we have seen over 400 officers leave our force and we anticipate more to retire. And so in this budget, not only are we proposing academy classes, it, we are increasing the starting pay of police officers. We are adding incentive bonuses for those who choose to stay in San Francisco longer. And we're gonna make a commitment to do everything we can to not only support our police force in San Francisco, but to also do the reforms necessary to make sure that we are leading the way around police reforms in San Francisco. We don't have to choose between having a diverse, incredible, active and engaged law enforcement agency and doing the reforms necessary to increase public safety for all communities. That is what we're gonna to continue to do. And in fact, we have invested significant resources into our street crisis response teams, into our street wellness teams, into our street overdose teams. And by the end of this year, when those 911 calls come in for people who struggle with behavioral health, those street wellness teams will be the first responders. Those alternatives to policing will be the first responders so that our officers can focus on the crimes that they need to focus on and not some of the street behavior and challenges that continue to persist not only in San Francisco but all over this country. We will also make significant investments in making our streets, as I said, cleaner and safer and we will also not only support the ambassadors of downtown, but the ambassadors, Urban Alchemy, and other resources throughout our city. Our street crisis response teams, um, our streets violence improvement program that supports cross-cultural and engaging with the community and dealing with the challenges in other communities throughout San Francisco will also be a very important part of the work that we do. Now, I want to talk about homelessness a little bit because we always make significant investments in homelessness. But finally this year, we are seeing that investment pay off. Since 2019, the unsheltered homeless population dropped by 15%. And since taking office in 2018, we've been able to get 6,500 people off the streets. So while other counties saw an increase in their unsheltered homeless population, San Francisco finally saw a decline and we should be proud of that. But we know there is more work to do. We'll continue to invest in our various cabin communities. We'll continue to invest in our various shelters. And many of the hotels that we acquired during the pandemic where funding ran out, we are investing the funding to keep those hotels in our portfolio so that we can keep people housed. Other key investments includes making sure that we support our families. $50 million in children and family recovery, providing additional support for childcare for various families throughout San Francisco, and a new partnership around mental health between some of our nonprofit agencies and the University of California, San Francisco, because if what has happened in these school shootings and other challenges in our school system and with our kids, if this has taught us nothing else, it should teach us 
that we need to address the crises that our children are struggling with before they cross a line, before things get out of control, before they take a life or lose their lives themselves. So mental health is going to be a key part of this budget in helping our children, in helping our workforce, and in helping the people of the city and county of San Francisco. There are so many investments. I mean, I can't get into every last investment today in this budget. But as I said, key focuses include definitely our economic recovery. Key focuses include children and families. Key focuses of this budget include public safety and homelessness and addressing many of the challenges that we face at a, as a city. And I want to also be clear that many of these investments came about because of what the people of the city and county of San Francisco said that they wanted. People in communities, not just here downtown, but folks in the avenues, people on the west side of town, people in the Bayview Hunters Point, folks from all over the community. They want us to make sure that they are not forgotten. And this budget is not only supporting the economic engine of this city, but it's in supporting our entire city. So every corner of this city is touched in some capacity with additional resources that will truly make their neighborhoods better and ultimately make our city better. And let me just finally say, before I turn it over to some of the amazing people who serve San Francisco. I started off talking about services, funding, and policies. But what makes services, funding, and policies possible are the workforce of the city. And when I say workforce of the city, it's not just the people who work for the city and county of San Francisco, it's people who work for various nonprofit agencies. Many people, despite this pandemic, still had to show up to clean the streets to clean the buses, to drive the buses, to get people to and from the hospitals. Many people still had to show up to work during this pandemic. And so this budget rewards our workforce, providing a significant raise over the next two years to ensure that they know how valuable they are to continuing to see this city work and thrive. But the extension of that is also our nonprofit workforce, and we heard from so many of the nonprofit agencies, including those who work in permanently supportive housing, that they too struggle, that they love the work that they do, but it is hard work. And they commute here as far as Lodi and Stockton and other places, and it is expensive. So we are also providing additional support for that workforce, for the nonprofit workforce as well, so that we can see increases in wages that should hopefully help make life a little bit better for the people who serve and work in the city and county of San Francisco. <laughs> Lots of work to do, folks. But let me tell you something. There are people who have tried to count San Francisco out. There are people who have tried to only focus on the negative and take those various viral videos and put them all over the map. But here's the good news. We know what our city is. We know we're the Phoenix. We know that despite earthquake, AIDS pandemic, when we were left on our own in previous pandemics in the past, that when faced with a challenge, like the Phoenix we are, we do rise to the occasion and we make the investments and we provide the support and we come together as a city like we did during this global pandemic, even though we are one of the densest cities in the country, we were an example and we saw one of the lowest death rates of any major city in this country and we should be proud of everything that we've done during the pandemic. So now it's time for a new day. It's time for a new day filled with happiness, filled with joy, filled with optimism. We survived a global pandemic to tell the story. And that part of that story is our economic recovery. Part of that story is making life better for the people of this city. 
Part of that story is making the investments and seeing those investments get put to work every single day throughout this entire city. I know what is possible in San Francisco. We've been through challenging times before. And because of these investments, and because of the work that we all are gonna do, including the many men and women who stand here with me today, we're gonna see San Francisco shine and we're gonna see San Francisco thrive. So I wanna thank you all for being here today. We'll release the details of that budget so we can start diving in to the specifics. But ultimately, I'm excited. I'm excited to see downtown come alive again, to be clean, to be welcoming, to be thriving, for folks to be spending money in all these stores and all our various restaurants. I'm excited to hear the bell rings of those cable cars. I'm excited to see people feel safe about going to their homes in the Tenderloin. I'm excited to see streets clean and for people to say, you know what? San Francisco is looking better than it ever has before. And we're gonna continue to make sure that we not only make that happen, but make sure that it continues to happen so people know why this is one of the most incredible, beautiful cities anywhere in the world. Thank you all so much. And with that, I'd like to introduce the captain of Central Station, Captain Julian Ng. Well, good morning, everybody, and thank you, uh, Mayor Breed. Um, I want to thank Mayor Breed, of course, Chief Scott, and the entire command staff to give me the support. I mean, Mayor Breed talked about, just not longer than six months ago, about the mass lootings that happened in Union Square. So, you know, we acted swiftly because of the support from the city. Uh, we are able to get officers down here, and now you see all the officers behind me making a difference in public safety. Um, I look over, I see Ben, Ben over there, I think Marissa was there, but I, you know, as I look at you, there she is right there, and looking back the six months of the hard work that we've done, including all of our partners behind me, um, to make Union Square better and safer. Um, you know, I think, I think about the, the budget that Mayor Breed just talked about and how important it is. I'll give you one example. One example, this morning, 8 o'clock, there was a uh, retail store just about 100 yards from here. Uh, 8, 8 o'clock in the morning, there's a uh, worker that came to open the store but found somebody inside the store. And so she's like, oh, my God, you know, there's a trespasser. So luckily, we had an officer right on the corner, so she didn't have to walk far to find an officer and uh, told the officer about this. So the officer responded over to, uh, with her and saw the individual. They called a couple more officers over. Well, it ends up, the individual comes out. He's not a trespasser, he's a burglar. So he came out with about four bags of merchandise and then he met the cops in the front door. So this is what I mean when, yeah, thank you. But this is why it's so important to have our officers out here uh, making a difference. Uh, we recovered about $4,700 in merchandise would otherwise be, be gone, so uh, very important. Um, you know, I was born and raised in San Francisco <laughs> and uh, worked here for the last 23 years as a police officer. Honestly, the best profession that I could have chosen. Um, I'm, the best thing that I could hear every day is you all, the community, thanking all officers that are out here, the great job that the officers do out here. Um, they are the backbone, they are the boots on the ground, they are the ones that are working hard and long hours every day to keep our city safe. But Union Square is a success for the last six months. The rest of the city needs it as well, right? The rest of the city deserves it. So I think that's exactly what this budget's gonna do. So I thank you very much, uh, Mayor Bree, and thank you very much. Thank you, and today we also have one of our wonderful, I, I get so many emails about our community ambassadors. Folks are always talking about the work that they do, Urban Alchemy, the ambassadors at Union Square, and today we have Sue Caldill 
with the San Francisco Welcome Ambassador Program. Sue? Thank you, Mayor Bree. Good morning, everyone. My name is Sue. Since I've been a San Francisco Welcome Ambassador, I've had the honor of working with local community partners, uh, business owners, and the police department. As part of this team, I've witnessed the value we bring to tourists, natives, and San Francisco, providing insight on restaurants, offering directions, giving hospitality escorts to destinations, are just a few of examples of how we enrich the experience here. When visitors come from all over the world, we make them feel at home. Our California welcome outshines Southern hospitality. So thank you so much, everyone. It's great to be here. Thanks to my team members, too. I couldn't do it without them. Thank you so much, Sue. And I want to also introduce someone who is working in the Tenderloin every single day. I know that we hear a lot of complaints, but I'm going to tell you right now, if it wasn't for the Department of Public Works and the various agencies that we work with to help keep the streets clean, it would be a lot worse. And one of those persons who's a supervisor for Public Works Clean Team is Nicole De La Garza. Thank you, Mayor, for the opportunity to speak for the hardworking men and women at San Francisco Public Works uh, that power wash, pick up needles, uh, clean the debris that is left on the sidewalks, and work together on a daily basis to help maintain the city and keep it clean. Uh, my name is Nicole De La Garza. I'm a supervisor for the Tenderloin, South of Market, and Treasure Island. Uh, I'm grateful to be here. This is my home city. I'm a native and I'm a current resident of the city. And uh, we're grateful for the wage increase that the mayor has given us for all of our hard work for the men and women who are boots on the ground every day, the essential workers who are out here during the pandemic and 24 hours a day to keep the city safe and clean. Uh, thank you to our CBD partners that work with us every day uh, to help clean and to be a presence in the city. Uh, I'm so grateful for the efforts of everyone uh, thank you to Jada and to Carla. They're great leaders, and I appreciate all they do for me and for the city. And uh, thank you guys so much. And last but not least, I have one of the owners of Schroeder's Bar and Restaurant, Angie Chung. Uh, thank you, Mayor Breed. When the pandemic started, it's no secret that hospitality was hit particularly hard. As the rest of the city's recovered, um, most of the restaurants along the city have recovered as well. Unfortunately, the story downtown has been significantly different. Workers have been slow to return back, and retail has been slow to recover as well, along with uh, the tourist business that we count on. Uh, a lot of times, you can feel really alone as a, as a hospitality or a business owner. Um, and you kind of feel like you're forgotten. So I was really excited to hear about the mayor and the city's commitment to revitalizing the downtown core. And, and this budget goes a long way in providing that first step. Um, our hope is that you know, as the downtown economic core transitions to whatever it becomes in, in a world of, of hybrid work, um, that the businesses, the legacy businesses that have made San Francisco unique in a foundation, Schroeder's been around since 1893, Tadich Grill, our neighbor down the street, is even longer than us. And our businesses, in, in some respect, represent um, the history of our, of our city. Um, so as, as we transition to the next generation of what downtown becomes, we'd love to see hospitality become a big part of it. And the mayor has allocated 
quite a bit of funds to help the arts, restaurants, bars, music, and, and we hope to use those funds to activate the streets and make downtown a, an attractive place to come and visit. So as she's made a commitment to safe and clean streets, I, I think our part is to enjoy those streets, come back to downtown, and really support the thing that we all want, which is a revitalized new San Francisco that we can all be proud of. Thank you. This is not as um, traditional as what we've done in the past in terms of announcing a city budget uh, because the fact is it's so important to me that when we talk about these budget numbers and we talk about these things that we need to do, that we definitely understand the people that make those things happen. Yes, as mayor, I take all the credit for all the good stuff. I take credit for the bad stuff too, but at the end of the day, the reason why many of the great things that you hear about happen in San Francisco, they happen because of so many of the people that are standing with me here today. The department heads, the various city services, the nonprofit agencies, the restaurants, the businesses, it's all of us. We really are in this together, and as we come out of this global pandemic, let's try to remember that. We're here to uplift this city. We're here to focus on the positive. We are here to develop our own narrative, our own story about what San Francisco truly is and what it means to us and what it can mean to a visitor when they have a wonderful experience, what it can mean to the kid who's walking downtown on their way home from school and feels safe in their community. It's what we need to do to change the city for the better. And if I know anything about being a native San Franciscan, I've seen us go through tough times before, but I know without a doubt that we can not only persevere, we can thrive. And that's exactly what this budget is gonna help us through. It's gonna help us thrive as a city, and I hope all of you will join me in helping San Francisco thrive. Let's open the doors, let's get back to work, and let's get back to having fun and having a good time. Thank you all so much.